Welcome to the top, hosted by attorney David Ryder. This is where we sort out the good guys from the bad guys and try to help you make sense of the law. We'll give you the latest on the big cases and add up the weird ones as well. We'll hear from the defenders, the enforcers, and maybe even a few lawbreakers. Regardless, you'll come away knowing more than when you started. This is Crime Time Central Legal Talk. Hey everybody, I'm David Ridings with Crime Time Central. We're also live on Stand Against Dark Blue, both on Facebook and on YouTube. So three different platforms at the same time to save energy and lighting and camera footage. Because there's no sense in doing three videos. I can just do them all at once. So I have a, a couple of really... Um, disturbing videos as normal. Um, in this day and age of dash cam footage and surveillance footage and everybody with an HD camera in their pocket, there, well, there are going to be no shortage of these um, hard to watch videos. We have uh, at least two more police shootings. Um, one of which the Footage was released. It's not very clear. Uh, in uh, Spotsylvania, Virginia, and another in North Carolina. The last name of, of the victim in both of those is Brown. One of them is on uh, Andrew Brown, and the others Isaiah Brown, I think. Well, we'll see in a minute. I think it's Isaiah Brown. One of the dash cam footages has not been released yet. Um, but before we get to that, I wanted to um, show you this one out of well, Fremont. Um, this is a motorcycle police officer. Fremont police released video of a deadly gunfight between an officer and a suspect on Highway 84 back in March. The incident began when a vehicle that was reported stolen set off a license plate reader and an officer was sent to investigate. So it's a stolen car. He tried to stop the suspect, but he sped away, hitting other cars while fleeing, according to police. And they have license plate readers in this in this city apparently don't even get me started on that became disabled and stopped the man joshua gloria is seen on the video shooting at the officer who took cover and returned fire gloria was struck and later died i'm going to skip ahead because this is just him chasing him for several minutes and he comes to a stop on the side of the interstate and it happens abruptly. I didn't get uh, this one in time to edit before, so I'll just I'll back it up, and we'll see when he first pulls over. Um, by the time the officer realizes he's being shot at, this guy's already out of the car. You can see the damage to the car there. Um, he's already out of the car and almost on top of him with his gun. It's a wonder this cop wasn't shot. Um, and then, of course, according to the mayor in Brooklyn Center, cops don't need guns on traffic stops. So there's that. So this guy takes a shot at him, and um, and I don't know what he's doing if he's going to try to get on the bike. It looks like this offender is going to try to steal the motorcycle. 
I think it's what it appears. So this guy, cop runs over to the weeds. Yeah. So the the guy was trying to steal the motorcycle. And uh, the offender is 10-7, which means out of service. He died on the scene. Um, and it happens that fast, folks. So cops are, are still um, being a police officer is still one of the, the most dangerous jobs you can have. And they're largely criticized more than anything. And today I read, I believe in the Washington Post, where there's almost 6,000 police officers resigning or retiring from the New York Police Department. 5,700, I believe it was, uh, that was reported. 2,600 of them already retired and then another 20 seven or almost 3,000 of them um, having applied for their retirement. That's what we're going to get, folks. Um, so for all of you people out there that want to defund and abolish the police department, you may get your wish. You're not going to like it, <laughs> but you may get your wish. Oh, man, it's just, um, it's so ridiculous. And the hypocrisy is is absolutely palpable. Hey, Donna. Wow, we need to pray for them. That's true. Matthew says, my granddad was a cop. I commend any police officer that puts that badge on. Yep, I agree. So there's a couple of other videos that I was going to show you. Um one of them is the footage out of Spotsylvania, uh, Virginia. And there's not much to see here. Uh, unfortunately, this was a mentally ill gentleman who called the police um, and was threatening to shoot his brother. Told the 911 operator that, yes, she asked if he had a gun, and he said, yes, I have a gun. Um, and he was threatening to kill his brother. I don't know why. It wasn't reported why he was wanting to kill his brother. But the police arrived, and um, this gentleman was in the street. Um, you can't really see. You can't see much. I mean, the news said, this is hard to watch. Well, it really wasn't. I mean, you you, you can't see much. You can see the aftermath, but the body cam is not, he's, this cop is behind cover. And so the body cam doesn't show the actual images of the gentleman being hit. Um, but the police officer says he puts the gun to his head and then apparently threatens him with a gun, uh, in some manner. And he shoots, I think seven times here. Show me your hands. You want a gunpoint? Show me your hands now. Show me your hands! Drop the gun! A Spotsylvania sheriff's deputy tells Brown to put his hands in the air. It's unclear from the video if Brown listens, but the deputy continues to give the order. He's got a gun to his head. Drop the gun now! Stop walking towards me! Stop walking towards me! Stop! Stop! About 20 seconds into the encounter, the deputy fires his weapon. You can hear at least seven shots. About 30 seconds after the shots were fired, the deputy walks over, turns off his body camera, and gives Brown medical aid. I'm saying 911, what is that? It's the emergency. This is audio from that initial 911 call that Brown made during a fight with his brother. Uh, give me the gun. I'm about to kill my brother. Do you have a gun? No. The family says Brown suffers from mental health issues. We spoke to the brother Brown was arguing with. He said his brother was not armed and the officer had no reason to shoot him. I know he didn't go outside trying to make a big of a deal. He got shot 10 times. Hey, the first thing a group of so, I, 
obviously that's not true that the gentleman did have a gun um i don't know you know the brother i guess didn't want to believe that he had a gun but um it is sad you know there's there's really nothing else you can say i mean the the, the man was mentally ill and the officer was yelling for him to stop walking towards him so apparently the guy with the gun he may have had the gun to his head or or not at that point but if somebody's walking towards you with a gun i mean you, you can't expect the cop to do anything else so you know give as many verbal warnings as you can take cover um and hope that he obeys your verbal commands in this case he did not and the officer had to shoot him this um, is another one out of North Carolina. I'm not going to show the news footage on it. Let's just suffice it to say the governor has called for the release of the, the body cam and the police chief says he's going to release it uh, as soon as the district attorney tells him that he can release it. And that gentleman's name is Andrew Brown. Uh, JJ says, killing people doesn't have to happen. No justice, no peace. Prosecute the police. Well, uh, you know, everybody's got their opinion, JJ. Um, that one is not shared <laughs> by most people that watch this channel. Um, the police are not out there hunting and killing people. The police are out there having to use deadly force when they have to. You have some uh, jack legs like Derek Chauvin. Um, who I've been on record early about what he did to, to George Floyd was just not justifiable in my opinion. Um, and I've always said that he, sh that he committed a crime and he should go to, he, sh he sh should go to jail for it. But, you know, some of these others like Micaiah Bryant, I mean, when you're calling for justice, no justice, no peace for Micaiah Bryant. Justice for, for Micaiah Bryant would have been a jury trial for murder or attempted murder. Um, so she unfortunately um, got justice because she was trying to stab somebody in the neck. And so, you know, these are a case-by-case -case, uh, basis kind of thing. I don't lump the police together. Um, clearly, J.J., you have and you believe that the police should be prosecuted. That's a pretty global statement, um, not based in or rooted in fact. And unfortunately, <laughs> I'd be willing to bet that you're between the age of 18 and 35. Um, and unfortunately, there's a large portion of that community, uh, 18 to 35, that believe the police should be defunded and abolished. Um, so if you're still watching, um, so JJ says, killing people doesn't have to happen. No justice, no peace. Um, you know, clearly killing people sometimes has to happen because they, they call for it. Now, there are some occasions where you can avoid it and where cops should use every measure to avoid it. Um, Micaiah Bryant wasn't one of those. Dante Wright, unfortunately, should never have been killed. Um, it was a tragic accident, and the police officer there, Kim Potter, uh, thought she had her thought she had her taser, and she actually had her firearm. Um, and Joseph says, "Keep shining the light on these situations. Respect goes both ways between citizen and police, and you're doing a good job." When let me pull that up there where I can read it better. Doing a good job when it comes to breaking down these different situations. Well, thanks, Joseph. I appreciate that very much. I mean, on, honestly, I do. I, I'm I'm honored. Um, by your statement there. Your segments are good training tools and I will keep sharing these videos. You're a good man, thank you. Uh, Donna says, that's right, David G. Writings, it's case by case circumstances. So unfortunately, there's a large group of people, um, and then Matthew said earlier, talking about his granddad being a cop. Thanks, thanks for watching and thanks for these comments, guys. Um, the the age group 18 to 35, I have several, I have five boys. 
all between the ages of 18 and 35. Um, I'm surprised at the numbers. And statistically speaking, 33% of people between 18 and 35 think that the police should be abolished or, you know, completely abolished. I mean, let's just play that through in your head for a minute. I mean, forget about the talking points and the, the, the left-wing bias that you've gotten in college and play that through. You have no police department to call and you live in a major city. Say you live in Chicago, for example, where honestly, black men don't need to fear the police killing them. They're doing a good job killing themselves. And that's widely known. That's, that's unarguable. So to say that we ought to prosecute the police is just a global stupid statement. It's unfortunate that people believe that. Actually, um, I saw a good video today. Let me share that with you real quick. And then we'll come back to this last one that we were going to talk about. Um, this actually, <laughs> Bill Mayer is, is pretty um, liberal, okay? He's, he's not... Um, I mean, I wouldn't even say he's middle of the road. He's he's pretty left left leaning, okay. But I will say, what brings him to the middle of the road is he does have some common sense. And there's a couple. There's been a couple of videos that Bill has released here lately that I've gone, wow, <laughs> that's exactly right. So there's a cuss word in here. I'll. I can't bleep it out. I don't have the bleep material here, but I mean, we're grownups. It'll be Why okay. Advertisers in this country love the 18 to 34 demographic because it's the most gullible. Yeah. A third of people under 35 say they're in favor of abolishing the police, not to funding, but doing away with a police force altogether, which is less of a policy position and more of a leg tattoo. <laughs> 36% of millennials think it might be a good idea to try communism. But much of the world did try it. I know millennials think that doesn't count because they weren't alive when it happened. But it did happen. And there are people around who remember it. Pining for communism, it's like pining for Betamax or MySpace. <laughs> so when you say, you're old, you don't get it, get what? Abolish the police and the border patrol and capitalism and cancel Lincoln. No, I get it. The problem isn't that I don't get what you're saying or that I'm old. The problem is that your ideas are stupid. Wow. I hate if you say, let's eat in the bathroom and shit in the kitchen. Yeah, that's a new idea. <laughs> But I wouldn't call it interior design. <laughs> you think someone 80 is hopeless because they can't use an iPhone? Well, hey, there's more cuss words in there, so I'll just... I think you get the point, um, JJ. So, I support the police here. I pray for the police. And... Um, and when they do something wrong, hey, here at Stand Against Dark Blue, we're here to report it. And, and we, will, we will shine the light on it. Big time. But when they do something right, we're here to report that too. We don't stand against the police. We stand against the dark blue. And dark blue just is a way that we signify uh, those cops that don't need to be cops. And everybody knows. Well, I say everybody knows one. Not everybody knows one. If you're a police officer, you know one. Um, it's rooting them out that's the difficult part. Because once they get a badge and they, and they get that position, it comes with power and protection. And let me tell you how they're protected. They're protected through unions, through the FOP, the SSPBA, civil service protection. They're protected because you can't sue them um, for Generally, unless they do something that's beyond the scope and, uh, of their employment, you, they have a, a general immunity. 
from uh, from prosecution. So there's also this little thing called the blue code of silence. And any cop that's being honest with you will tell you it, it does exist. I used to be a police officer. I, I was not a racist police officer, and I didn't work with a lot of racist police officers. I didn't work with a lot of police officers that had power and aggression issues, but I knew some. Now, at that time, I wasn't mature enough to be able to expose it and root it out. I wasn't trained how to do that either. Cops need to be trained. And listen to me. Cops are people. And so they come to that job with their own prejudices and biases. And, and they, it either gets, they either get training to put those to the side and do their job. Or they get the power trip and it gets worse. But you can train cops to police themselves. You can train the police officers to denounce the blue code of silence. It won't be easy. It didn't get this way overnight. And it's not going to be fixed overnight. And it's not going to be fixed by defunding them or abolishing the police. It's not going to get better when you take resources and money away from the police. Defunding the police is a political talking point thought up by somebody who has no common sense and wants to make money off of your division and your hate. They want you to hate each other. Politicians make money by your division. So defunding the police is just a stupid idea. It's, it's like <laughs> Bill Mayer said, eating in the bathroom and, and, you know, doing your thing in the kitchen. It's a new idea. It's just not a very smart idea. So when you defund the police and you take resources away from the police, that means you take resources away from their training. Okay. When you take resources away from their training, what do you think you're going to get? Better training or worse training? Really? I mean, you tell me, what are you going to get? When you take money away from the police and you lower their pay, do you think you're going to get the best of the best coming to apply for that job right now? I mean, you can raise their pay. Do you think you're going to get good qualified people coming to apply to be a cop these days? I mean, really, who would do that? I love being a cop. I would have done it for free. I was shocked that they paid me for it when I, when I was a cop. It was the, it was the greatest dream of my life to become a cop. And, and to really go out and help people. I mean, really, that's why, I know it sounds cliche-ish, but that's why I did it. I went out not, not to have the power tripping and, you know, the gun and the badge and be able to shoot somebody. There are people that, that get on the police department that have those desires to hurt people, and they're bullies. And when you start defunding and abolishing and criticizing and prosecuting the police for every little thing they do and throwing things at them and shooting them and killing them and marching against them and screaming pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon. And some of these communist groups that are, that are walking around hating the police. What kind of effect do you think that has? You think, you think you're having a positive effect on the, on the problem? Really? Do you think if you, if you take money away from their application process and their training process, do you think you're going to get anything but bullies? Do you have a solution that we're going to get better qualified people with less money? Tell me, I'll wait. I don't think so. And I don't think you think so. I think you just want, 
you just want a million views on your little hashtag video and you want to go out and do something stupid in front of a camera and call for the defunding of police so you can get people to watch your YouTube channel. Well, shame on you because you're not helping. There's a lot of problems in this world. And, and the police sometimes create problems for themselves when they don't follow their training. But abolishing them is going to create a problem like you've never even ever imagined. It will get so much worse. So I wanted to share this last video. Um, sorry, the JJ comment made me <laughs> slide over to the Bill Mayer video. This is not a police-related video, but it's tragic. And I wanted to share it because this girl didn't deserve this. And really, the reason I'm sharing it is I want you to pay attention to the crowd around this guy that shoots this girl. And um, I don't know. Just meditate on it. Tell me what you think. This is a young pregnant girl. And in Prince George County, which I don't know what state that's in, but um, I'll just watch. It was just before five in the afternoon Tuesday on Southern Avenue near the DC Prince George's County line. You see a group hanging out around a car, people walking by, including a child. Just behind them, Two women cross Quinn Street. There's two women right here. About yeah. 15 seconds later, you see them come running back across the street as if someone called or texted them. Now they look at this guy here. People around the car, greeting them, giving hugs. Keep eyes on the man in the white hoodie. The women aren't there long. They walk back the way they were headed down Southern Avenue. Police say that's when Malik Johnson raises a gun and opens fire. The women running despite their injuries. We'll replay it back. When the shot is fired, people with Johnson seem to barely react. And then he just casually walks away the other direction on Southern Avenue. Police say Malik's brother, Michael Johnson, is believed to be the father of Jalen's child. Police say he was there at the scene and is charged as an accessory. The newborn remains hospitalized. She's fighting for her life. A third person arrested, Bianca McDuffie, is also charged as accessory to murder. Investigators are not revealing if she was here too. The, the violence have increased in Prince George's County and, and in Washington, D.C. We have to do something about it. What a tragic shooting. And it, and I believe it's telling of our society that a, a man on a crowded street corner, mind you, in front of a market, people walking, nice day, kind of like today in Nashville. Lots of people walking, pretty sun, um, mild temperatures. And she didn't have a care in the world. She's got this baby coming. She, I didn't show you the first part of the video, just break your heart, because you see her on there making her little TikTok videos. And she's just a happy little girl that's about to have a baby. And now her life's over and that baby is fighting for its life because it wasn't, I mean, it was viable, I guess, to the, to the point they were able to save the baby, which is, which is good. It's terrible. This baby doesn't have a mother now. But my point was not everything bad in this world comes from a police officer shooting at somebody. And this man took a shot at these two girls for reasons I don't know. But the only reaction that I saw at all was the man standing right next to the car. And he went like that, like it, you know, it hurt his ears. Nobody else moved. The guy sitting on the curb didn't even turn around. What does that say about America? It's a rhetorical question. Sorry about that. Hit the wrong button. I just thought that 
it was worthy of, of showing you that video and reminding you that there are a lot of good cops. Now, that listen, there's some bad cops. If you go to our website and look at our two pledges side by side, we've got a police officer pledge and a citizen pledge. Standagainstdarkblue.com. I know I'm on Crime Time Central too, so for the Crime Time Central people, standagainstdarkblue.com is our nonprofit that um, was founded to stand with good cops in an effort to root out the bad cops. We would like every police officer in this nation to sign that pledge. Am I going to get that? Not likely. No. It would take significant bravery for a police officer to sign that pledge because it says, I admit there's a problem today in my department today. I admit that there's a blue coat of silence that has allowed problems to exist for generations. And I'm going to denounce that blue coat of silence, which means I'm going to, um, I'm going to point at evil when I see it. I'm going to, if, if I know you're a bad cop or you do something and, and you uh, abuse a citizen in front of me, I'm going to take immediate action right then against you, the cop. I'm going to police the police. So it takes a very brave police officer to sign that kind of pledge. The citizen pledge just basically says, I know not every cop's a bad cop, JJ. There are some good cops, and I stand with them. But there are some bad cops that need to be exposed. So I'm going to stand with the good cops in an effort to expose the bad cops. I'm going to protest peacefully if I do so. I'm not going to riot or tear stuff up or burn stuff down. And lastly, it says, I'm going to register to vote. I'm not, I'm not telling you how to vote, but if you're out protesting or if you support Black Lives Matter or, or whoever you support and, and you're out in the street marching and calling for change, but you're not registered to vote, are you doing anything to affect change? Nope. You're just making some noise. Which that's fine if that's all you care to do and, and you're not mature enough to vote for change and vote for people who support your values. But honestly, these people who are marching in the streets, I bet a large majority of them aren't registered to vote. And it's a shame because that's where your voice is really heard. But... That's just my opinion. I know my opinion's not shared by everybody, but it's still mine, <laughs> and I'm allowed to have it. I love the cops, and I support the cops. Um, but a good cop will tell you, and I used to be a cop, and I can tell you, you ask any good cop what he hates the most, and he'll tell you it's a bad cop because they're dangerous. They make the rest of, a, of them look bad. They, they cause undue attention to the whole force. They cause people to want to defund the whole police department. And, you know, bad cops need to be rooted out. And that's why we started this organization, Stand Against Dark Blue. So go to standagainstdarkblue.com and sign our pledge and join with us. Fight for change. Stand against the darkness. Pray for police. You want one of these bracelets? Let me know. I'll get you one. In the meantime, we love you guys.